we are getting closer to a more elegant solution to our original solution for the problem we're trying to address. Uh, the next thing I want to address is this redundant code. We have this code, which is identical to this code. And you remember I had to put a comment here, and so I, the, I had to remember to put the comment here as well. And then I increment a count here, and oh, I got to increment there as well. And oh, what a pain, what a pain. Let's remove the redundancy. We are going to factor, sometimes called refactoring, our code. Let me tell you where the term comes from. If you've done any math, any basic algebra, You'll see equations like this, 3x plus 6. If you haven't done any algebra, don't worry about this example. But still an example. Your teacher tells you to factor this equation. Well, you see that this has a 3, and this, there's also a 3 hiding out in here. Is this not a 2 times 3? So there's really a 3 hiding there as well. So I can pull both of these 3s out. I'll pull them both out. Let me draw parentheses here, and I'll pull the 3 out to right here. And then that leaves me with an x plus 2. All right, plus 2. So I've taken the redundancy, the redundancy is the 3, and I pulled it out here and put it outside the parentheses, and now it's 3 times x plus 2. Same mathematical meaning. That's what we're going to do with our code. The 3 in our case is the duplicate redundant code. This is the 3. All right, this is the 3. I want to pull it out. So how are we going to do that? Well, let me highlight it. I'm going to hit Control x to cut it and save it to my clipboard. I'm going to just drop some semicolons out here to note that's where we pulled it from. And then I'm going to do the same thing here, just drop some semicolons to say, hey, we're pulling it from there. And then I need to put that code somewhere, and I need to put it there once. So I think what I'll do is drop down here below the return, Control v paste it like so. And let's label it. All right, let's, let's label it. Uh, just the same as we've done with again. I want to label this code saying, calculate next power. And I got my semicolon here. Which means, hey, when I jump to here, we're going to do this code. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to replace all this. I'm going to say, jump to calcu calculate next power. All right, what's that going to do? Let me split the screen here a little bit so we can get both the code I pasted down here to where the label is at, and then here's the jump to the label. What's going to happen now? What's going to happen now? Well, why would I do that? Pause the video. Think about it. Come back. Well, here I'm saying jump to calculate next power, which means, yeah, we'll calculate the next power, and then I don't want to just fall off the edge of the cliff here. I need to jump back out to here. So let's call this uh, back. All right, when we're done with calculate next power, I'm going to say jump back. And you might think, Jamie, that's pretty clever. Pretty good job. There's a problem with it. Can you think of what the problem is? I'll give you a hint. If you can't think of what the problem is, step through it. Pause the video, come back. This will work okay in this first situation. But then down here, look, I'm going to say jump, calculate next power. I'm going to drop that right there as well. And now here I'm going to say jump to calculate next power, which again will execute the code we wanted to do very good. But then the last thing it's going to do is jump to back. Well, back is way up here. I don't want it to jump there. I want it to come here. We'll call this back two. So I want it to jump to back two in that case. Oh, well, if I say jump back two, well, now when I call jump calculate next power on the first iteration, turn your Turn it up to high def, folks at home, if you need to. When I say jump to calculate next power, well, now I'm going to jump back here. And I'm going to skip all these steps. Oh, what a headache. What a headache. Now, I vaguely recall ranting on about go to in a previous video in this playlist. And this is why go to is bad. And I must agree. We're using jump, the JMP instruction. That's essentially a go to in higher level languages. And it's uncontrolled. It's not it's turning into spaghetti code. Are we we're gonna jump over here and then we're gonna do this and we're gonna jump back here, are we gonna jump over here? Do I jump from here and then come back to here or here? Ah yeah, that's so unmaintainable. You cannot uh, keep your head straight with that kind of coding. We need a better way to do our jumping and we need it to be more controlled. When I jump to calculate next power from here, I want to jump to back here. And when I jump to calculate next power right here, I want to jump back to here. And I could probably reuse calculate next power all over in my code. And I want it to jump back to where I jumped to. <laughs> 
Let me say that again. I need to return. Ooh, there's a word we've seen before. Where have we seen the word return before? I need to return back to where we jumped from, if that makes any sense. And this is where the term function, or in assembly language, we call them procedures, come into play. All right, in the next video, I'll show you uh, how, how to use procedures to solve this exact problem.